Hello everyone. Uh, we're going to give a presentation on custom PCBs. Um, quick outline uh, of what we're going to do. We're just going to go over like the ground level of what a PCB is, and then we're going to actually go into a program and design a board. So we're going to go through the, the schematic design and the circuit board layout, and then we're going to talk about how we assemble it, and then resources for other teams that want to do something like this. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Scott Berman. I'm an electrical engineering mentor here at 971. Uh, I'm Henry, and I'm a, I'm a student here. Okay, so we'll go over the basics of what a PCB stands for printed circuit board. Uh, we shorten it to PCB because it's easier to say. Uh, it, it, connects, it basically connects electrical components, and uh, it's made up of a few layers. Uh, the, there's copper, uh, which is like the conductive material, and then there's basically like the filling is like something like fiberglass or something that's non-conductive, uh, and to like basically connect connect like wires and connect components, you use these things called traces, which are just basically just copper traces. Why does nine seven one make PCBs? Why do we make PCBs? Uh, we want things we cannot buy, so. Uh, often we have to make and design our own boards in order to get the performance and customizability that we want. And we also try to simplify our wire harnesses so it's easier and more universal for us and we can do faster swaps and stuff like that. So these are a few of the boards you've made. Uh, this is the IMU board, so this interfaces with this, this chip over here, which basically an IMU is an inertial measurement unit. And what that does is it tells you your acceleration what angle you're at, and sometimes for, for ones on like rocket ships and stuff, it's, there's a magnometer on it that helps you with gravity and stuff like that. And then we made this board this year. It, it, it's pretty simple. It, you press it onto an encoder, uh, and it comes out, you can't really see it, but it comes out on a connector. Um, and then these are the boards we made this season. So there's the Pi power board, which basically takes in power and goes into our Raspberry Pi and lets us and also through this connector lets us interface with these boards and these boards. So we basically universalize these connectors so we can interface with whatever we want. This is a close up of one of the boards we make. Uh, the reason why I made this board was because in, in order to power Raspberry Pi, which is like a little computer, um, uh, we, we need to take it from the PDB uh, and that when the battery drops voltage, we can't have that happen when to power the Pi. So the Pi needs a sustained voltage of, I believe, five volts. And in order to keep that, we have to create this circuit that lets us do that. So we for our process of like our thinking process is like, what do we need? Why do we need it? And then we go into like how how we want to do it and how do we want to design it. Um, and th this is one of the products from from that. And oh, any questions for for now? Okay, so we use this thing, this program called KiCad. Uh, we use it to create electronic boards. Uh, it lets us do schematics and PCB layout, and it's also free, so anyone can use it. And it's really powerful, so it's really, it's really nice to use. And then uh, we're going to go into actually making one of these boards, a pretty simple board. Uh, but we're going to go through the process step by step on how to do it. And make sure to stop me at any point when you guys are confused or don't know what's going on. Okay, so we'll go over the steps for the schematic, and then we'll we'll actually execute them. A schematic is similar to like a, like a like you can think of like an arch architecture schematic. You just draw out exactly what you're going to do, but you're not actually doing it yet. So it helps you get an overall like bird's eye view of what you want to do before you actually do it, where you can catch problems and actually sketch out what you want to do without spending too much time on it. Uh, so. I'm going to go step by step following these instructions. I'm going to go and we're going to create a board. So first of all, you're going to create a project. That's pretty easy. I'm not going to show that, but we're going to open the schematic. So I'm going to go into my second screen, and we have a schematic here. It's a, it's a blank canvas. Uh, we have down here we can add like titles and stuff like that, but uh, we're just going to focus on the actual component part. So if we go back, second step, or third step is we're going to add a resistor. Uh, does everyone know what a resistor is? Or okay, so uh, we're making a CAN terminator. 
basically, all that is is a connector and a resistor. Um, do you, does everyone know what CAN is or heard of CAN before? It's like a, a form of communication over uh, uh, for our robot. Scott, if you want to explain more. Yeah, CAN is uh, it's a communication interface. It talks to like the uh, Falcon motors and to the uh, uh, and to the uh, 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 Robo Rio board and other like our little there's a little LED module on top of the uh, on top of the robot that we can turn on different light colors on it. it was it Candela I think was the name of that. Anyway, no, basically you can make it you can set it to flash different colors or that kind of thing. But it's a communication interface that lets you talk from between different micro you know different controllers on on a system and set up communication. And why do we have a CAN terminator? And we need a CAN terminator. So the bus is a um, yeah. So the, bu the, the bus is a, a pair of wires that ties between these various controllers, and then the, the you need termination on it in order to prevent like electrical reflections on it. So it, it, it's switching at pretty high speed, and you need to prevent these electrical reflections. And it's kind of uh, way of looking at it is like what termination is for is in order to come up with something that matches the impedance so it kind of deadens it. So if you, like if you take a rope and you attach it to a wall and you flick it and the rope will hit the wall and then you know, you'll see this wave that hits the wall and they'll kind of bounce back and reflect. But if you made that kind of just soft enough it would end up absorbing that, that uh, wave and keep it from reflecting. And that's uh, what the purpose of that uh, the can terminators are anyway. It's a pretty simple looking circuit, but it does a really important task. So, does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So uh, we're in, we're now in our schematic, and we want to add a uh, we want to add a resistor. So we have a lot of tools here. Uh, kind of it might be a little bit overwhelming, but if we go over to the side, we have a these these are kind of our overview. If you guys have ever used like Onshape or SolidWorks, it's like Similar to that, but like for electrical. So um, we want to add what's called a symbol. Uh, when I open this, it'll open up a, uh, a little library. So these, these are called libraries. Um, you can imagine it as like you're, op you're going into a library and there's like action, there's adventure, there's different authors. Uh, this kind of sorts it out for you. So for example, like amplifier, current, analog switch, analog to digital converter, and each of these encapsulates like let's say I open up analog to digital converter, these encapsulate their own little drawings, own little symbols. And uh, these kind of give you a guide on what you're trying to do and how to actually do it. So we, what we want is a resistor. So we can go into this little filter bar and just type R. And then we get this little thing. It's R for resistor. It looks, typically looks like this. And then we get, we get kind of attached to our mouse pointer. We can just drop wherever we want. And now we have our resistor. Um, Let's go back to our uh, slide. Uh, and now we need to add something. Uh, along with the resistor, we need a connector for that two can wire that goes into the board. We need our connector. So I'm going to go back. We're going to go back to the exact same place. And just look for, I'll, I'll show you guys the actual. So we're looking for connector, right? So we're going to go here. Oh no, where is it? Where is it? Oh no. So there's different types of connectors and we want one that's called CON. These are like basic connectors that you'll find anywhere and we have a bunch, we have so many that we can use. Uh, but if you look in the names, there's different things. There's male, there's female. I'm not going to explain it, but male is like the ones pointing out and female is the one going in. But uh, we, want a, uh, we want a male version uh, and we want Basically, it's rows and then columns. So if you can see actually over there, it's one by two, so it's one row, and then there's two pins on that and on that connector. So we're going to go here. And then we're going to take this guy. And then these little dots on the, on the connector are actually where wires connect. So OK, so now we have our parts. What do we do now? What's, what's the problem with this picture? They're not touching each other. They're, they're, this doesn't work. They're not touching each other. So now 
the next step, I'm not going to go back this time, but we, we need to add a wire to connect them. Uh, anyone think they know where we need to connect these cables to? Yes? Uh, one of them has to connect to the one that says the two, and one of them has to connect to one. Yeah, yeah. And because it's a resistor, the order doesn't matter. So we're, I'm just going to connect one to here, and then one to here, and I'll do that. So uh, you just got to go to this wire and then find the locking point and then it kind of gets you this little this little cable and all you have to do is just drag it over and that's a connection that's one connection and then uh, all that has to do all you have to do now is do the other side so this is this is like a a pretty simple board on other schematics it's going to be a little bit harder and a little bit bigger than this but for this one it's a pretty straightforward Connection. So, so the, you, you, now you have your your, your schematic. Um, but the one thing one thing that schematic helps you with is uh, finding what parts you're going to use and what values you need. Uh, so if we look over here, we there a resistor. There's different types of resistors. There are different sizes of resistors. Uh, there's different like resistors have different values. And and for this one specifically. We want it to be in 120 ohm, which is basically the unit of resistance, 120 ohm resistance. So we're going to go, and we're going to, if you double click on a part, you get to see kind of the, the symbol properties, which the symbol is each of those little parts. You get to see these properties. There's values, there's reference numbers. The reference basically, when you're actually assembling the board, the reference really helps you with um, actually seeing what, um, what part goes where, and, and so you don't mix it up during assembly. And then the value is like the unit, like we were talking about, 120 ohms for our resistor. Our footprint is for a different step, we'll go in that a little bit later. And then there's more like data sheet, like what part you're using and certain things like that. So all I'm going to do for now is change our value to 120 ohm. OK. So now, now our part has 120 ohms. For our other connector, I mean, we don't really have to change it because that's exactly what it is. Um, but now we're going to do this thing called assigning footprints. Uh, a footprint is if you ever like on a board like this, a footprint. This these these parts don't really look like this in real life. Like th this is like a sketch, just like a little drawing. When you have a footprint, your footprint it actually tells you what size and what shape your part is and how to connect it. So that's what these like silver, these silver little blocks kind of tell you. Uh, th those are your footprints on the software. This is what your footprints look like when they're actually, in, when they're actually placed. So we're going to assign a footprint to both of these. So I'm just going to start with the resistor. If we go here. So there's, there's also a footprint library similar to your symbol library, but uh, these, are, these are real, t real like the real size and the real shape and the real pinout of, of everything you're having. It's similar, it's a, exactly the same setup as the other one, so I'm just going to go and find. Because we're looking for a resistor, I'm just going to look for a resistor. Okay, there's two types of resistors. There's called SMD and THT. SMD is surface mount. It's like you can solder it to the surface and that's where it, that's where it lies. Uh, THT is through hole comp like a through hole component, so it's it's one that goes through the board and like you can you can actually physically get it through the board. Yeah, um, kind of like on the this board here. I don't know if you can see, but like the connector is a through hole connector with the pins on the back side of it that get soldered. So the pins went through the board and then were soldered on the back side. So that's through hole. And surface mount are like these full transistors here. They're on the surface of the circuit board and just soldered to the board. So for this specific board, we're going to want a, a component that just lies on the surface. And that we can find in here. OK, there's different sizes now. So I'm not going to explain the sizes, but the smaller the number, the smaller the part. And because we're like not like if on like your computer, on your motherboard and your computer on like a Raspberry Pi, you're going to be using super, super, super small components because uh, you're, a human's not placing them, a machine is, so it's super precise. But for us mortal humans, we have to deal with hand-eye coordination. And so that's why we give us some room and use what's called an OA805. 
805 size, which is pr it's, it's big enough to place, but not so obnoxiously big that it gets in the way of like sizing restrictions. So I'm just going to go to 0805, and then I just double click it, and now now we basically have it attached. Okay, that was, and then we're going to do the connector now. Just do that quickly. For this one specifically, uh, it it not always are all the footprints on on the program, so sometimes you have to import them. So what you can do is you can basically just make a new library. Uh, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it library. And, and basically, it's just my personal library. I can add whatever I want to it. Um, it's similar to these, but these are supplied by KiCad. And, and these, are, these are ones that like, come with the program. But because the connector we're, we're using is not that popular, we're going to have to make our own library and import our own footprint. Uh, which is pretty easy. All you have to do is go go ahead and import it. And I've already kind of organized it to be easier. But normally you'd go on the internet and then you'd find a footprint to download. And this is kind of what, yes? Is there something that we should like search for to find a footprint? Is there are catalogs available? Is there like a Google search term that makes these things come up? Yeah, so normally when you find a part, uh, you, you know like, Digi have you ever heard of DigiKey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on DigiKey, there'll, there's like tons of links. Or, and in, if you have the part number, you can normally Google that part number, and a bunch of things will come up. All you have to like look for is this, on the DigiKey, normally there'll be, um, like if you scroll down, there'll be this thing called uh, like drawings and stuff, and, and there'll be this thing called Ultra Librarian, which is like a library, but has mostly all the parts. And then you can basically go online and search and search for the footprint. So uh, search for the number. So the part number of this guy is 70555-0036. If you Googled that number, you would find a footprint for this that you can just download. And, yeah. and then you can import it into your own program. Yeah, and also through, uh, through DigiKey or Mauser, they have links to Ultra Librarian and Snap EDA. And uh, uh, you can, the, 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 and, and those companies uh, supply footprints. And you can also draw them. So if, if, if you can't find one, then you can also use the tools for drawing your own footprints. And we've done that a bunch on these boards. We've drawn our own. Did that answer your question? OK, so I'm just going to attach this to the library. OK, so now, now we have our what we want. So I can go back here. And then do the same thing that we did last time with the footprint. But this time, I'll, I'll look for our custom library. And we see our little part here. And oh, here, actually, while I'm here, uh, I'll explain some things. So on our part, we have, um, we have plated holes, and then we just have through holes. Uh, this part, specifically, is a right angle through hole part. So it basically it goes in at a right angle, and then these two parts are just basically just holes, just with no copper. No, just it's just basically holes in the like if you took a drill and just drilled into it, that's kind of what it would look like. And then these are these are specific holes; they are plated holes. So you actually when, when, this is where you solder in your connector, and then the outlines here are kind of like the edge. Like this tells you your edge cut and like what, where the actual the the actual size of the. Uh, uh, the component is. So, if, so now we have our part. We have all the connections, and we have uh, we have all the footprints assigned. Uh, now, if I gave this to you guys, you guys still wouldn't know what this was doing. It it there's no labels. There's there's no there's no way of knowing what it's doing. So, we're with something really helpful like. For you and for other people that look at it, we're going to add labels. Yes. Comments. So we're going to add comments right now. That's a, that's a good observation. So oh yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to add labels now. It's it's so there's can high and there's can low, and it kind of doesn't really matter which way you put it in because it it just like it doesn't matter. <laughs> so so we're going to name it can high. And then we're going to attach the label to one of these. 
And then we can just do that again for can low. And then now we have our labels. And if anyone c comes over here and looks at what this is doing, they'll have an idea of what's going on. Uh, we can also go over here and kind of in, in, in change this name to like where this is going. So we can name it to like can bus or something like that. And, and now, now we know where this is coming from. So if someone goes and looks at the schematic, they'll know what, they're, what's, what basically goes in and what comes out. You can also place text. If you hit like the T button over here, then you can place arbitrary text. Funny, you know, if you want to describe something about about the circuit, you could put that in. Yeah, it's like exactly. So you know, now we have our little schematic with what we're doing. Um, so we're actually almost done with our schematic. We're really close. So we're going to uh, now going back to these reference numbers. So these are really helpful, like I said before, to, uh, to reiterate. They let you know when you're actually making the boards, what parts go where. And so when you buy your parts, it's super easy to kind of sort them out. So we, can, we don't actually have to do this. On a bigger boards, it's right, right here, it's kind of not that hard to do it yourself. But on bigger boards, where you have tons and tons of parts, you don't really want to go individually doing these things. So we're going to go, there's a bunch of helpful tools. Uh, but we're just going to use this one called Annotate Schematic. And we annotate it, and now we have R1 and J1. R1, resistor, J1. Scott, do you know why it's called J1? Uh, jack. Jack. OK, <laughs> so it's a jack. OK. Uh, so now our schematic is done. We're done with our schematic. And now, now, so like our drawing's done. We have the big picture of what's going on. Um, now we're going to go and actually draw out the board. Now this is like, this is the part where, this is like the important part. This next step is where, this is what actually goes into production, and this is like it, you have to do this right. So uh, we don't. So for in this part, we can go to back to our tool section, and we can do update update uh, PCB from schematic, and this is our schematic to reiterate. And this will basically everything that we have here will just get moved over to this, and it'll. So one, one note is the schematic describes the interconnect. So we've got these wires that we drew in, and the schematic captures that net list of you know, the, what, what is tying from what pin on what device to what pin on, on another device. And so the net then, along with the footprints that we identified, get passed through to the, to the PCB layout tool, which is the next step. So that's OK. We'll fix that later. But uh, so now we have our thing attached to our mouse. We have our resistor, which is kind of small. I'll zoom in really. So we have, this is, this is now, remember when we assigned the footprint? And the, remember, that's what it looked like. So we have our resistor here, and we have our footprint here. We have both, sorry, both of these are footprints. And now we need to lay this out in a way that we can actually manufacture. So I'm just going to click this down. And now we get these kind of lines. We get these little lines. Uh, these are it's called a rat's nest. They just kind of tell you what goes where. And this is from our schematic. We made these connections on our schematic. And this kind of just helps the, you, you kind of visualize what you still need to do. Um, and if we go over to this side, um, we have different layers. So here, let me go over with my mouse. So we have tons of different layers. It's kind of like scary. It's a little bit scary. but. There's only a few that we actually need to kind of look out for. So FCU, this one at the top here, front copper, back copper. So on a board, uh, on a board like this, you have the front side and you have the back side. It's as simple as that. So this is the back copper. This is the front copper. We have like the front solder paste and the back solder paste. Uh, and then the silk screen. The silk screen is if you see. Okay, you see on this board, you see all the white lines everywhere? It's like almost like a printer. It's, it's, uh, it's like what you, what you put on to actually tell you what your board does. And it, it basically lets whoever's making it know what's going on. So like, th like this logo, for example, we put on the silk screen layer. And the fr it's front and back for all of these because there's a front and back side. If, there's different types of boards, so you can have this. That's called a two-layer board. This guy is a two-layer board because it only has two layers of copper, but you can get up to like four or five-layer board, four, four, six, four or eight-layer boards, 
where you're basically just stacking a ton of boards on top of each other, and you can make really complex boards like that. Um, so I'm just going to lay this down. So we have it laid down now. I don't really like these lines. They don't really help me that much. So I'm going to go over to this side, and I'm going to turn off basically what's called user comments and user drawings, which is like what was drawn on before and is not actually put into production. So off. So now we have what we actually need. So we can, we can basically drag each individual component around to where we want. So for this board, we want it to be really, really small because we don't actually need that much space. Uh, so because we have two layers, we can use that to basically put this resistor inside the board. So the next step is to basically lay out the components or organize the components. If you have a lot of components, you need to organize them. But because we only have two, uh, we can kind of just jump right into the layout. So we can just drag this into the, the base here. But there's a problem with this. Uh, these are both on the front side. And if they're on the front side, then the connector wouldn't be able to fit on here. So we need to put the resistor on the back side. So in order to do that, we just there's a bunch of settings if you flip flip it over, but we just need to change that and flip and it. And you did that by right clicking. Oh yeah, I right clicked on it, and this is how you get to kind of see what you're going, what you're doing. And now kind of what's there's a problem here. Does anyone see it? Uh, yes. The wires are crossed. The wires are crossed, right? We need to get something over here and something over here. I mean. If we really were like really want to do it this way, we could route this around here, not this, but that's not a good way to do it. So we're going to do the same thing that we did to change side or flip it. You can either hit R, which kind of rotates it, or you can right click it, and then you can do this. It takes a little longer, but it, if all else fails, you can kind of do something but like that. It also gives you the shortcut keys. It tells you what that's true. It, when it, you it do does it highlight what keys you can use. So on here, it'll tell you yeah. what keys you can use. So moving yeah. M, drag. Yeah. Like, like stuff like that, yeah. it, they make it easy for you to kind of figure it out. So now we kind of have, this is kind of, this is, oh, we're almost done with this. This is kind of what we want. Uh, uh, here, let me just center this a little more. Okay, does anyone have an idea of what our next step is? Justin. Uh, adding the copper traces. We're going to add the copper traces, exactly. So um, we have our layers, back to our layers over here. We need to, there's a little arrow, I don't know if anybody can see that, there's a little blue arrow that indicates what layer we're currently editing. Currently we're on front copper, but you see the colors? There's red and there's blue. Blue, we, we kind of put this on the back side, so if I'm currently editing the front side, what do I need to do to get onto the back side to, to actually edit what we want? Yes? Select the back side. We need to select the back side, exactly. So now we're on the back side, and we can do this thing called route tracks. But before we route tracks, um, we want to actually be able to control the size of our copper traces because uh, otherwise we might have them to be too wide or too small. But for this one, we, want to sp we, can, we can edit that by doing, uh, changing what basically what, what's called the track. And we just go up here and we can hit edit predefined sizes. And then we have a bunch of options here. We have tracks which are like the actual copper traces. We have vias. Does anyone know what a via is? No. Okay, so a via is like, um, it's, it's a hole. It's, they're so small, I can't really show you from far. But it's like, a, it's like a tiny hole through the board that you can like route things underneath. So let's say you have something on the top side. Like Let's say you have a connection on the top side, you want to move to the bottom side. You can use a via, which is kind of like a little, it's almost like a plated hole, like you guys saw before. Um, in the connector. It's almost like this, but super, super small, and basically lets you flip the side of the connection on that. So, but we only want to change the track width, so we're just going to add a new track width. We're going to be like 20 mils, uh, milli inches, so 20 thousandths of an inch, and okay. And now we can go here and select. So now we have the right track size. Um, so now we're connecting these. Uh, okay, so we're going to go over here into our little toolbar on this side. And there's a few options. There's like, there's, but we kind of just want the route track. So we're just going to, it should just lock on. Like, it, it'll lock on to the, 
the part, and then you get this. It kind of zeroes in on what you want to do. So it's kind of it's telling us we want to go here. Um, but we can't just do a straight shot like that. There's a little problem with that because if we do this, when we actually solder it on or if we put it into an oven or something, when we do that, there is a chance that the part will turn itself because this is copper. It, it, it wants to, this, this wants to get attracted to this copper, so it'll actually bend itself to, or, or even like go upwards, like physically upwards. Uh, in order to kind of get close to that copper. So what we do to avoid that is we, we, we go out further. So all, all it wants to do is just stay in the center. So we, we can just keep going here. We want to keep it a little bit even. Sometimes it tries and, to make and, you do weird stuff like that. take advantage of surface tension of the molten solder in order to align the part. So if you have it balanced, uh, then when, it's, when, 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 it's, when, when the solder's all molten, the, the component will be centered on the part if you bring the traces out from the middle of the part. Yeah. And then when we do our trace, we, we want to we wanna have it kind of like a clean trace. So we go in. It kind of wants us to do something like this, but we, we don't want to do that. So we can just keep going around. And then there we go. That's our trace. It, it's literally as simple as that. You just you, you kind of just go around to make sure you're not affecting this part. And then we just do the exact same on the other side, and then we're almost done. OK. Now, this is pretty close to being done. There's a little problem, though. We've never actually told it how big we want the board to be. So if we go and if we, if we view this board, go and look at it, I mean, we don't really want this, right? All of our stuff is right here. And if like we flip the other side, there's our little resistor. Like this is big. We don't need it to be this big, and it wouldn't even work if you tried to ship it out because you never defined your actual size. So we're going to do that. Uh, uh, so now we we get to go back to our layers and we get to look at a different layer. It's called edge cut. It does exactly what it says. It's where the uh, where the machine will go and drill the outside and. So we want to just go select that layer, and we want to go to this line tool, which is different from the track tool. The line tool is just like like a drawing, uh, drawing line where you can you can you can do whatever you want with it. Um, so now we have this line tool. Uh, does anyone know where we kind of want to make this make the edges? Do we want to get really close to the board, or uh, what do we want to do? Yes. Far enough so it doesn't interfere with anything. So tell me when you want me to tell me where you want me to put it. Like here? Uh, higher. higher up? Like here? Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. Um, for 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 these, you do need like a little bit of space because this ha has to have enough to hold on to. Because otherwise it might just tear through the side of the board. So you got this right, but for up here, you actually have a little bit more leeway and you come can come a little bit further down. So yeah, that was really good. So we're going to start here. And then we get our little line. Tells us how big our board is. And also, it, it's really nice because it locks onto a grid that we can change. But um, the bigger grid that you have, uh, the basically the more clunky it becomes. But it's also really easy to work with. So we can just trace our way around this board. And now, once we connect our, our net, we have we have basically an, a, a finished board. We can go and look at it, and now we have our, we've defined the cuts, and this is, this is what we want. But what's going on here? What did we forget to do with this? There's, there's text embedded in the, there's text embedded in these pins that we have to move. So all we have to do is just take this text. It's a little bit hard to reach, but once you get it, you can move it. Remember when we labeled the connector, when we labeled it CAN bus? Uh, this is just the label. We don't actually need it here, but it gives it to you. But we can actually, just, what layer is that on? Uh, it's on the... That's just on a layer that doesn't matter. Uh, actually, yeah, never mind. Forget about <laughs> this. It's on a layer that doesn't matter. J1, that, though, is. Yeah. Uh, this one, J1 is on the front yeah. silk screen layer, which is like what gets printed. So this is the one we actually kind of want to see. So we can just move this over to the side here. 
and now that's actually on a layer that, that we can see. Uh, and we kind of, this board is kind of mysterious. We don't really know what it does. When, like when we print it, what it, what it we, we kind of want to label what this board does and maybe who made it. So we can go to a different layer. We can go to our front silk screen layer like we were on before. Or we can go to our back silk screen layer, which is probably better because when we put our connector on, it's going to be on the front silk screen layer, which will be covered up by this big connector. So everything's going to be reversed, but we can click kind of, you can click our text button, and then we can write, what does this board do? Terminates, Terminates the canvas. So we can write, can terminator. So now we have our, our flip text that we can put anywhere we want, but preferably we'd put it in a way that it's out of the way of this. So I, I just put it on the bottom here, and now you have your label. Oh, it, and this is pretty good. Uh, it's it's on the back side now, so if you open it up, ah, so it is on the. We have yeah, it's on the front silk screen. But now we have our our little label, and we have our 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 piece here, and then we have our resistor. This is pretty much done. This would work if we if we put it out there, um, but we need a. Did I miss anything? Uh, let's see here. If you double click on CAN bus. We can make that thing go away by moving it to a different layer. Yeah, so it's just, when you clicked on it, you saw the layer that it came up on, and then you could then switch to a different layer, and then it won't appear on the board. So now if you hit all three again or whatever it is, the, so uh, view 3D, and it won't. Uh, yeah. yeah, now now show. now the little label that we had there before isn't going to show. Uh, and this is pretty much done. Mm -hmm. uh, all we have to do now is kind of put it in a form format that the actual manufacturer can read. So uh, it's called a Gerber. Uh, so um, what it's called is fabrication outputs, and then we can we're going to select Gerber for now. But okay, so we get this little thing, uh, and we kind of get to select what layers we want. And I don't know if you guys have remembered what layers we changed, but we were changing. The front copper and back copper, we definitely want those. The front paste and back paste, that's kind of where the solder, the solder goes. Oh, sorry, uh, the, the front mask and the back mask is where the solder goes. And the silk screen is kind of what we printed onto the board. So we, get, we use that to see what's going on. And then the edge cut is, remember how we defined our board size. So one note on a board, what is green on this board is solder mask. And that it, it prevents solder from actually attaching to the board wherever the mask is. And, uh, uh, and the part where you solder, you can see it's silvery. It looks, it's actually solder. Um, and that is where the solder paste goes. And that's what the paste mask is about. So, OK. So uh, we, get it, we have a bunch of options on what we're doing. R right now, this is what we want. It's just the default setting. And uh, uh, our output directory, it's whatever you really want. I'm going to put it into a, an output directory that we can look at. So I'm just going to put it here. Uh, and this is pretty good. Uh, like, uh, uh, you get, for these general options, you get to kind of customize what we want, but this should be OK. Um, for what we what we're using, so we just hit plot, and then we <laughs> now we have our, our 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 files for what the actual board looks like. But we also need to generate a drill file. So like, where are these holes being drilled? What size are these holes? And it tells the machine what it tells the CNC machine what basically holes what, what drill bit size to go in and where to drill it at. So we're gonna go generate this normally. I don't really mess with this because normally it's always right, but there's a bunch of different options you can. If you've like changed your zero for some reason, let me move my mouse. If you change your zero for some reason, you can, you can, or your drill unit. Like let's say you use millimeters, you can go and do that. But for uh, for for our purposes, it's it's all good. So I'm just going to generate that, and then the map file is just like a PDF version uh, of what the machine would see. So we're going to generate that, and now. We're, we're done. We have all the files we need. We have everything that we want. 
The last step before we ship it off is we go and we uh, we go and we look at that file. We look at all of these at once to see if we if everything works out properly. So I'm going to go and open all of these files. I think you don't need the Gerber job. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yep. We'll open with all of these. Oh wait, hold on. Oh yeah. I have to do this in, yeah, do it in my yeah, my file exactly. editor. <laughs> Sorry. Now, when we open these, this is what basically it's what's going to happen on the manufacturing side. This is what this is what ha this is what the machine sees, and this is what we get. We give the machine. So, um, if we go. Basically, the ones that the, the first eleven layers are the ones we can kind of take off. So we can take off like we get to see front. So red is the front side, green is the back side. If we turn off red, you can see the parts that kind of work with both. Mm. And then if we look at uh, actually, these are kind of in a weird order. But uh, all that we need to kind of see is that we have through hole component. And in, in that in that looks proper. That looks right. Uh, and we also have all of our our drill holes, which which are these two big guys. And so now, if we want, uh, we can go and I think we have yeah we have 15 minutes. So I guess if you unless you guys have a lot of questions, we can go and actually look at what purchasing it looks like. Okay, you want to see that? Okay, cool. So we can go to. Let's go, we can go to Google Chrome, and then who we use, actually I'll go back to the slideshow, who we use for our board manufacturing is these, uh, which is this, these guys called JLC PCB, and they're pretty cheap, and they, they get, they've, every time we've bought a board for them, it's been, it's worked. Um, so we can go, and this is kind of what it looks like when you're ordering. So remember, remember the files we just generated? We generated the, the Gerber files which is what these guys take. So all we do is we go into uh, our new folder where we have this. We need to um, actually we need to zip it up for them. That's pretty simple. And then now with that zip file we can go and actually order our, our, our PCB. So it's uploaded, and that's the board we made, right? Uh, we have our reference designators, like we put on before. We have the name of our board. We have our holes. That looks that looks like what we did. And for these settings, we have a two-layer board, but you can like you can make it like thicker boards, like four and six. Um, it automatically does most of it for you, uh, but like we can choose there's a lot of customizability you can do here and actually let's say if you're making a bigger board like like this one you're not going to hand solder all of these because they're there's so many and they're so small so so what you're going to do <coughs> is get something called a stencil which is like you can leave it actually it's right here you can leave it like a cookie cutter but it doesn't cut anything this is basically you match, there's a front, there's a back side, and then there's a front side. You basically what you do is you basically press this board down and line up the line up the components here. And then once it looks good, you basically spread these this thing called um, solder paste and, and you basically pick and place the components individually and then you put them into this guy which is called a reflow oven and that basically does what the soldering iron does but for your uh, but basically it does it all at once and for each side of the board for soldering uh, surface mount components. oh yeah for surface mount yeah. components yeah um, okay so let's say we want to make a stencil it's pretty simple you can choose this one for example it doesn't have a frame but it's, it's actually pretty self-explanatory you just Kind of the default options are normally a good choice, but if you if you have like a really like like a really small 
really, really small component. You might choose to have it have like have like electro polishing or something that'll do a better job than just sandpaper in sand. And that's that's pretty much all you need to do. That's the whole cycle of going from an idea to a schematic to a PCB to something you can actually manufacture. Anything to add? Um, nothing for this. Just one note is we were able to, we built our own reflow oven um, off of a, a kit from, I don't remember the name of the company, but I think it's in our list of stuff. But it, uh, the reflow oven works very, very well <laughs> using just a, a, it's a modified toaster oven. Yeah, we and, bought uh, this toaster yeah. oven and we, yeah. uh, we basically like, if you look in here, it's kind of, there's a lot of insulation and then there's this gold like reflective, like it keeps all the heat in and then there's like all like this like aluminum tape that insulates it and like it's basically just a beefed up toaster oven that has a computer in it that controls the, uh, the amount of heat at a certain time uh, and how long it stays there and, and that's really helpful because uh, that lets us not solder them by hand so we had to make like 40, we've made, we made, I believe, 20 of these, and we made like nine or 10 of these, and we made like three or four of these, and if we had to do these by hand, that would take months, like it would take so long, you'd have to have like, like 10 or 20 people working at it on a time if you wanted to get it done during the season. So having this is super, super helpful. The net cost of this was only like, $300 and if you tried to build if you tried to buy one of this caliber caliber it'd be like a thousand dollars so and it's also really fun and it, it's not even that hard it, there's a tutorial online it's like really easy to follow and and like even beginners can build it and yeah it's super good uh, any questions uh, yes yeah. <clears throat> so would you say like what are the main advantages of having custom BCBs compared to like for example, um, we had a Pi Pico bridge for our color sensor this year, and we just did it using like breadboard and hot glued it all together. Is it? I mean, there's reliability, compactness, but like, what are the main points? Reliability, compactness, <laughs> e uh, easy to reproduce. Right. You know, so if uh, you know if. if uh, uh, yeah, it's easy to replicate them, which is, is, is useful. Um, it also kind of removes the, you know, kind of, uh, uh, kind of reduces hand touch. It's like the more, you know, the more things you have to know how to do, the more likely you are to make a mistake. Right. And, uh, you know, so it, it, it helps with, you know, with, with, with reducing how many, you know, it, it reduces the complexity of, of, of what uh, any, you know, what, what, what you need to be able to do. And we, we've done a lot of, uh, you know, kind of wiring of circuitry, circuits into harnesses and stuff like that, and it's, you know, sometimes wires get mixed up and that kind of thing. It's, you know, trying to reduce the amount of that that happens yeah. uh, is useful. So then where do you kind of draw the line of saying, okay, we're going to go custom with this versus, like, we can do this with existing products? Hmm. I mean, it's <laughs> different for yeah. one versus a lot of other teams. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of w what we can easily buy is worth buying. Uh, if we can't find a, uh, you know, if we can't find a device that does what we need, then we build it. You know, and also, you know, it's like I've got quite a bit of time to help out with, with, you know, with defining the circuits and that kind of thing. So, okay. you know, it's like if, you know, it depends on resources, yeah. I think, and, and, and whether to do the designs or not. So at the end of the day, it's just about essentially finding the ideal solution, and mm -hmm. like if you can buy it, you can buy it. Yep. But otherwise, you can make it. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Just another tool, you know. Yeah. It's also pretty fun. So. <laughs> What's the lead time like for like if you were to order this today? Would you where would you get that from JLC? About two weeks. Well, yeah, it depends. If you order like. If you like, for example, like, if you change the color, it'll take a while. It says two days, but it takes like eight or nine more days than green. Green will be done in a couple of days, but yeah, it's like somewhere between, like, I've gotten it 
sometimes they do it really fast. Like I've gotten it back in like four days. But sometimes, like if you order it in a different color, um, then it'll take a little while longer. It also depends on what shipping you get. So like uh, sometimes it'll get held up on customs for weeks. Like we just had one where it was supposed to come like two weeks ago, but it came like on Wednesday this week because it was held up in customs. Because it comes from China, there's always that risk of like it gets lost or something like that. But typically, I get it in like eight days or seven to eight days, and it's super, super cheap. Like typically, the shipping's more expensive than the boards itself. We ordered like a hundred of these for like eight dollars. It's it's like it's not that big. It's like if the if the cost is the issue, then um, if the cost is normally the issue for them, for you, this is cheaper then this is super, super cheap, and mm -hmm. normally, normally it's, it's not that hard to, to get. So actually, the expensive part is the components on the ore. But it depends on the complexity of your board and how many components you have. For a board like this, it's a resistor and a connector, so it's going to be very cheap for each board. We're u actually using one of these on one of our robots right now. Yeah, this is a board we've actually used. No, no questions or bad questions. So. Do you ever get um, order boards with placed parts on them? Or do you almost always use a solder mask and just do it yourself? Yeah, we've always done it ourselves. But we looked at like it. Like a yeah. speed thing or just a good experience or like? Uh, I don't know. We, we, we haven't really, you know, I, I know J, J, uh, was it JLC, yeah. PCB, they do assembly. I don't, we, we've never used it. I don't really know kind of what, you know, any, how, how they behave. I don't know how long it takes to get boards or what the, uh, you know, what, what issues they have. In, in my work, I've ordered stuff on, you know, where, where, they've, where I've had the manufacturers put them on the, the assembly houses, assemble the boards. But... Right. Uh, but yeah, here uh, we've always done it ourselves. Uh, why would you change the color of the board? Oh, because it looks way cooler in black. <laughs> <laughs> why are green? Why is green the default color? Like it's all colors. <laughs> it's a good crazy. Because it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Should have just been black from the beginning. Like, yeah. Duh. I I I. I that one thing when it's green is you can still see the copper underneath, and when they're black, you really can't. And so it kind of gives you a little bit of ability to inspect that you don't have with, with black. Why would you do like less layers on the board and for this one, it would more layers uh, for the uh, Yeah, so a board, uh, actually, this board's a four layer board. Um, is that one four? Layer? I think I it's two. I think that one's four. This guy's four yeah, layers. Four. Yeah, and I think so is this guy here. I think that one's four layer also. But basically, when as the board gets denser, uh, it becomes really hard to run power and ground to all the various components. And so, kind of the the, the, the first step uh, in making in, able, in order to make the board denser and kind of perform better electrically is you put power and ground on the inner planes. And then the outside you use for routing signals. And, uh, uh, and it makes it much easier to manage the routing. Um, but uh, yeah, basically it's in order to allow higher speed communication. That when you wire things on, I guess that's another reason uh, you know, for building boards versus, uh, you know, versus uh, wiring them up on breadboards, is when the, speed is, when, when the speeds are high, you end up with a lot of inductance, and that's kind of your enemy. It ends up uh, uh, causing, uh, uh, you'll end up getting ground bounce, you know, where you're sending a, you, you know, you, 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 you've got something sending zero to one on one side, trying to send it to a, you know, some receiving circuit. And because you've got a lot of inductance, you end up with the voltage kind of moving around on the power supplies, and so it doesn't, when it should be seeing a one, it doesn't see it because the vol because the ground moved on it, and that happens when you have uh, kind of a lot of you know when 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 you don't have a very clean path for uh, you know for how the return currents flow, and uh, circuit boards help with that. But yep. you had a question. For, sorry.
Uh, I think she's referring to the product type. Oh, <laughs> I, wonder, I think that might be a form that it tells you. Or there might be like a certain guarantee they'll give you. Let's see. I betcha. So, okay, so ah. what changed is it It basically gives you uh, like, a, like, a, like it tests. Okay, so it, like it tests, it tests it more uh, rigorously to see if it works. Because you might, they test it a little bit with like probes <laughs> and stuff, but um, I guess they'll test it more. Yeah, You'll so, pay more, but they'll... <laughs> yeah, in, in this case, what they're doing is they're... Uh, what a four-way Kelvin test does, just reading through this, is there, the, there's two terminals that are pushing current through, and another two that are used for measuring voltage. And with that, you can, you, you can kind of precisely measure what the uh, resistance is of, the, uh, of, 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 of a uh, trace. And so it's kind of, they, they, they can have, have an improved measurement of the trace and see how, how well they built it, you know. Um, whereas I bet the thing industrial just is, uh, does it say? It doesn't say it's, anything. It's a flying probably probe, it's, just, it's a flying probe where they just are checking continuity. They'll, 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 they'll just like on an ohmmeter when you put it at, where it has a continuity beeper, they basically have something like that where it's got two probes touches the, the two terminals on the, on the circuit board and confirm that there's a connection between them. You had a question. Yeah. What parts or mechanisms do you find yourselves often having to make a PC for? Cameras. <laughs> and uh, just vision and localization, because yeah. yeah, that's the most customized part. You can yeah. talk about Also, it. the IMU. We uh, we built a uh, we wanted a really good IMU on our robot and you, we basically couldn't buy a board for it and so we came up with a, uh, uh, with our own board for it that interfaces to a Raspberry Pi and then uh, uh, so we can get a uh, uh, get a much better performance out of the IMU than we could get with the off the shelf device. Yep. Are the boards delicate? They're. Delicate from the stand, it kind of depends on, on what you mean by delicate. That they're, when you drop them, they won't yeah, break. Yeah, you, you, but yeah, they, they'll they're, hurt they're, easily. They're <laughs> delicate from the standpoint of ESD, like uh, electrostatic. They're, they're, they're sensitive to static electricity. Um, but they're not, you know, the, the, the material that the circuit board is made of is very strong. Um, that uh, it's fiberglass and it's uh, kind of a very strong material. But good question, Brian. Um, how do you get the stencil pattern to be exactly to the um, actual circuit? Yeah, so um, we don't even have to do that because, like, remember when I opened the viewer and there was like a bunch of like, there was like a, after we had made the Gerbers, we opened up a little viewer that had all the little display it, it in that display it gives you this the uh, the uh, paste mask the paste mask yeah in the paste mask this the, the whole goal of this is to get the solder like when you're like basically getting the solder paste on it so it just in, it just makes holes in a metal sheet so kind of yeah maybe first put behind the round that's no, it's, it's this guy yeah but basically this has holes in it, and the, and, and, and the holes in this uh, paste mask are defined by that paste mask layer of the circuit board. And so you can edit, you know, so the parts have those, uh, the, the service mount pads will uh, uh, create, uh, the, 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 the service mount pads and the footprints are design, uh, uh, the, the program uses that to figure out where how to define the space mask layer. Okay. And, uh, and then this is just another thing that they, uh, you know, I don't know whether they build this through etching or laser, but something like one, one of those. And then it's very, it could very likely be a laser cut, but what is that? And, okay, and then we send it out to get laser cut by another. Yeah, this is, this is built by the same company that builds the circuit board. Remember when we went down to like this stencil here? That's yeah. the stencil. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they it, yeah. Provide yeah, they provide it. Yeah, they like, provide it. If, if exactly. you want it, like for this board, for the board that we have here, yeah. it's gonna be oh. a job for hand soldering. So we we didn't get this, but on a bigger board, 
Yeah. Like, like even this yeah. one. This Tiny one doesn't <laughs> have one. Yeah, this sport definitely. Like that one, that one's super this, dense. This sport definitely. Yeah, and then also that, the LED board that we have. All the builds, definitely. boards we built in the 2022 yeah. season needed yeah. a uh, uh, needed one of one of the stencils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. If you spill the water on it, would it sound like it? It know. might. It kind of depends how clean the water is. <laughs> like water doesn't actually break at the middle. Yeah, what, the water, yeah, yeah. What, what water, water is wonderful, but it. Like if you spilled water on it and didn't realize that you turned it on, would it not work? Because water is conductive. It'd be pretty hard to get water on it because they're on the robot. So yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it isn't good. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I mean, it may, it may or may not cause troubles. Kind of depends on the circuit. But uh, yeah, water is so water itself isn't so bad. You know, it's like they when 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 circuit boards are made, they run them through dishwashers to clean them. So, <laughs> you know, so you know, but but then they dry it before you use it. <laughs> you know, so. Are there like, out of time? Um, power concerns with the board you guys designed, considering like how low the um, the voltage goes on those lead acids. And that's the reason for this board. That this has a power supply on it that can operate down to four volts. So, like four to sixteen volts, and it gives exactly, five volts out. exactly. Yeah. It can regulate the volt. Yep. It can regulate it. Yeah. Which, which is neat, useful for the pies because yep. the pies need to take a certain amount of voltage. Take like non lead acid. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's All it. Ready.